Hi, Marla. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. Hey, Graham. Hey, uh, Ingo, Ralph, how are you today? Good. Ingo, it's time for... Five Minutes with Ingo. Five Minutes with Ingo. And today, also with Ralph, co-founder of Rapid Miner and a true expert on text analytics. Oh. Just talking about sentiment analysis for data scientist number seven. Ralph, how is that working? Well, we've seen text classific uh, we have text classification in the past, so now we want to apply that to text. The question is, how do we do that? Um, well, let's look at some statements. Okay, what cool. do people say about data scientist number seven? I just hmm. happen to have a, a, like, like a statement here. Oh, how convenient. So, yeah, it is. So, we have, for example, a positive statement. Unicorns are amazing. Yeah, yes, they are. Yeah, of course they are. Other people have some trouble, so let's check out what they're saying. Finding unicorns uh, is difficult. Okay, Indeed so it is. two text sentences to, well, yeah, unstructured data that it really is. How can we bring this into a structured format? So, uh, Ralph, what, what would the first step look like? Well, grammar is always so difficult, and I think the most important part is in the words, so let's skip grammar. That's basically pretty much exactly what I'm doing in English every day. True. Yeah, I know. Anyway, okay, so, so let's tear the text apart into okay. the components. So we are like like just breaking this down, so we have still those two sentences, but every sentence is broken down into those what we call tokens. Ah. So every word is becoming a token. Okay. okay. So what's the next step? Well, still a lot of words, and some of them don't carry as much information, like is and are, are not so central. Let's just tear them out. Okay, so we throw them away. That's what we call stop words. We can remove them. Well, now we still have the two sentences. Not really as structured as I would like it. We're heading towards a table, so let's put in more structure. Since we put away the grammar, we ignore the word order and basically only look at the words. Okay, so that is interesting. That almost looks like, like a good structure already. I think we need the pen. Um, whiteboard number one, can you give us a, a pen? All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. What a good whiteboard. Um, so we could actually say like those two words occurring in both both sentences, so we can actually make a cut here, mm -hmm. another one here, and another one here. So it's almost like columns in a table. We ah. have almost a structure now already. Okay, so then, what can we do now? Well, we want to simplify things, so we just count. Is a word occurring or not? So here there's no word here. True, but we have one here for finding. Yep, and, and one for amazing. For the unicorns, unicorn. actually we have two ones, and for difficult we have a simple one. So look at that, now we have actually a table. Every token is becoming a column. The values here is just the count of words for, okay. for every, every word in each sentence. Yep. Now we can add another column, which is basically the positive sentiment or the negative sentiment here, and now we have this label we usually want to predict with machine learning. So we can now use any machine learning method, SVMs by the way are great for that, by just t taking this table here, train the model on this data in order to predict if it's a positive or a negative sentiment. And that's really about it for, 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 for the general idea about text, text transformation. Only problem is, what are you doing if the texts are becoming any longer? Well, the longer the text, the higher the values will be, so it's kind of unfair. The longer texts are stronger, so we want to divide that by the length of the text. This has two words, so I divide those by two. The other one has three words, so length is three, I divide okay. it by three. So afterwards, it does not depend on the length anymore. So that means really unicorn, for example, is more typical for the first text. Yeah. Because it's occurring in 50% of all the words, basically. Right. And here it's only in 33% of all the words. So that makes it a more typical verse. Unfortunately, it occurs in both texts, so it doesn't make a typical word for positive or negative. But for example, amazing and difficult, you can see there's some difference. I can. Okay, that is excellent. Uh, that's really amazing. Now, of course, there's another problem, in my opinion, because what are you doing with tech words which are just very frequent overall? Like, we've been throwing away those stop words like is or are. So those are words which are very frequent in all text documents. What can you do yeah, about them? Yeah. So this was is called text frequency. It's about how often is the word in the text. Oh, I think we need a second whiteboard. Where's whiteboard number two? Here it is. There we go. So this is text frequency. It's the count of the word divided by the length of the text. And then the other term is taking care of words that are too frequent in too many documents. So we count in how many documents they are and take the inverse of that. So that means we are normalizing the term frequency. So the term frequency is what we see here, and by normalizing this, we give terms which are 
well, very frequent in all documents, a smaller weight. And that's a perfect representation for text documents in general. And that's really a great way to transform unstructured information into structured information. And that's Fantastic. for today. Interesting. Thank Thanks, Ingo. Ingo. Thanks, Ralph. And this has been your five minutes with Ingo and Ralph. <laughs>